Well, like I'm still stunned, so not really prepared to have any kind of comments. I've been kind of scrambling this morning with some things, but obviously uh, the loss of Coach Mason comes as a huge shock to all of us. Um, and you always see him kind of bouncing around with energy and and with his intensity and to think that we're not going to see that is just hard to get my arms around. But um, our condolences to Marion and and his daughters, Cindy and Tracy. And of course, I talked to Travis today. He's out in Maine and uh, he learned of it. Uh, this morning when he woke up and uh, I think he's en route back playing his way back to town here so we're all kind of getting our arms around this obviously he's an iconic figure here uh, at Michigan State and certainly here at Mon Ice Arena uh, for me your mind starts to kind of I've known him since I was 17 years old and he recruited me to come here and, and he, he's had such an impact on me and my professional life from bringing me here as a as a prospect to play and win championships on uh, establishing the program into a national power back then um, to uh, really kind of talking me into the ccha commissioner thing and before that uh, bringing me here as an assistant coach and then uh, obviously coming back here as the head coach so um, it's mind-blowing to me um, when I heard the news early this morning uh, of of our loss. So uh, with that, I guess I'll just answer questions. You you guys might have. I, I when I got up this morning, I had a text from Dave Carrier, who was contacted during the night from Cindy, and uh, so I learned I don't know five thirty, quarter to six this morning. Did Ron recruit you? He did. What do you remember about that? I remember he was a great recruiter. Uh, I, re I remember he had he had that good balance of um, you know confidence and and humility because at the time the program was trying to revitalize itself and and uh, you know big reason a big reason I came to Michigan State was because of Ron Mason. Like I, I just felt that uh, I really believed in his vision for what the program was going to be and the opportunity he was presenting to me and uh, he obviously made me feel like I could be a big contributor here and and that's why I came here and I, I told a prospect this morning I have my day today I have I came in to be with a recruit uh, and then I'm, I'm supposed to have knee surgery today so I've been kind of juggling all this stuff um, and I haven't had a clear mind but when I start thinking back of those times, it, you know, just coming here as an 18 year old, it's, it's impacted my whole life ever since. And you never really take time to think about that, but it really did. And he's the guy who invited me here. What type of advice and guidance did Ron give you over the past few years? Oh, there's been lots, you know, uh, obviously this past season was a struggle. And, and uh, so he would talk to me at certain times uh, about managing certain situations and, he would compare it, uh, things to you know times that he went through in his own experiences, and uh, certainly offer suggestions on how to handle handle certain things. Um, you know, when when I was in the CCHA, um, probably didn't talk as many of the other people thought we did, but you know he he always what stood out to me about Ron Mason you know we see him here at Michigan State as he impacted the hockey program players like me who played for him understand how he impacted us you know as teammates um, in the locker room on campus here but what I had a chance to see was his impact in the sport and so I just came from I got back Friday from NCAA rules meetings and I always he's always in the back of my mind because for all the years that I watched him from a different vantage point, not so much as a player, but he put the game first. He was one of the few guys that you always knew were in leadership roles, would put himself out there, and, and the game always came first. Um, 
His position was never related on a national topic, in my view, towards what was going to benefit him or what was going to benefit his program. Uh, he always felt, hey, if, if it's good for the game, it'll be good for our program, you know, and it'll be good for Ron Mason. And uh, that always sticks with me. And even m as recent as this past week, when we were deliberating on issues as a part of the rules committee, uh, I always, you know, kept thinking we got to do what's in the best interest of the game, take that position. So I I've had advice from him for the past 25 years on a variety of different topics related to the game. Uh, whether I was a player, assistant coach, commissioner, you know, or now head coach. The other thing, Tom, as you know, is he wasn't a declining 78. He was vibrant, efficient every day. He was around this program, so he was visible and alive. Wasn't that, that's what's so shocking. Yeah, that is what's, that's what's so shocking is you're, you're probably never really ready to hear that kind of news on anybody. And, and yet, if somebody's in declining health, you're not surprised. But when I, when I, I again, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm kind of numb, I'm, kind, I'm stunned over it. And um, the last I saw him was, was for a brief time in Florida at, Dave, uh, at the American Hockey Coaches Convention. And we went to a dinner, and I really hardly had an opportunity to even chat with him. Um, we were at, at the induction for Dave. He drove in, drove in from his home down there. So... Yeah, you know, I can only imagine what the family's feeling like, um, but the, the news has hit us all really hard here today, too. Have you spoken to any of the family yet? I have not, and I think they've, they've been kind of overwhelmed. And so uh, Tom Newton and his wife, Eve, are over there. Dave Carrier, who they reached out to, and Cindy did in the early hours of the morning, he's been over there. They're going to really serve as our conduit uh, uh, with the family, and we're going to try to do everything that, we can that they may need to, to help and uh, again I'm going to be in surgery in a couple hours so I'm going to be a little out of pocket the next couple days. What made Ron such a special coach and allowed for him to achieve so much success at Michigan State? I, I think uh, there's a few things. Uh, he's, he was a great student of the game. Um, I think tactically he was very sound even even today you know watching the game you know, trying to follow the new things that are going in the game. He always had a great passion for it. But I, I don't think you can just win on tactics. I thought what made him really good is he, he had an uncanny ability to know how to use his players, uh, put players together, their strengths, and motivate them. I think more than anything, being able to motivate your athletes is critical, and I thought he was really good at that. He was able to – he didn't care if you liked them or loved them. Um, he, you know, you, you respected him for sure, but uh, there were times you, you didn't had no idea what he thought of you, uh, but you, you'd play hard, you know, and he'd figure a way to get you to play hard. So I thought that was it, and I think unmatched is his his passion for the game and his competitive fire. Like he had an incredible intensity, and um, you know, I'm sure there are people that are like that, but his, his intensity to win was as high as anybody I've ever met. How much has that rubbed off on you as a coach? And do you find yourself at times saying, wow, this is tough Coach Mason would do? Enormously, enormously. I remember when I came here, and I'll, I'll never forget an incident in my first year. We got off to a good start, and we lost the game in overtime at home. I think it was our first loss, and I can't remember what our record was at the time. And we lost to Ferris State, and whoever scored the winning goal for Ferris State Gary Haight was the last guy back on defense, and he tried to make a move to beat a guy where you don't make that play. And he got stripped of the puck, guy goes in, scores a goal, then comes to the bench and he taunts our bench and taunts our coach. And in those days, those were fighting words, you know? And uh, anyway, it was our first loss. We're off to this, you know, really good start. I think it was Coach Mason's third year. And it's like, wow. And, uh, you know, in junior hockey, when you played, you played a whole bunch of games, and you lose a game, shake it off, you play the next game. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, right? So I come in the locker room, and I was one of the first guys in. He was waiting for hate, and he grabbed him, and he <laughs> throws him against the wall. Not so sure those are tactics we can use today. Sticks go flying everywhere. And it was that moment I learned that 
you know, every, every game kind of matters and, and you can't waste opportunities to win games. And, and it wasn't like, hey, it's just a, it's, it's a game and what we play tomorrow night. It was like, hey, we wasted an opportunity. And that really caught my attention. And then watching him over the years, I mean, that's just the way he is. I don't care when Sean Walsh was here, those guys would fight over a tennis match, you know, or who's driving to work and got here quicker. Uh, so his 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 competitive spirit was off the charts, and that has very much stuck with me. You were never have left wondering where he stood, right? No, no, he, he was. Had opinions. He had he had opinions, yeah. And uh, whether you you uh, agreed with them or not, he he was willing to express it, and I admire that in him. And usually they're very pointed, you know which again, you know where somebody stands. I think that's admirable. Talk a little bit about his coaching tree. I mean, there's there's not really a realm of hockey that isn't influenced by Ron Mason. No, and, and even today, uh, with how fast all this started happening, you know, I was trying to just kind of sit down and gather my thoughts to say, wow, you know, you, you never really prepare for something like this. And this is a man who's made such a, you know, again, iconic impact on this program and so many people that he impacted. And so I was trying to think, who's appropriate to reach out to to make sure that they've gotten this word? And so I started texting, and geez, it's all over the hockey world. You know, whether it's uh, people in the NHL, it's um, uh, guys that he coached who are just doing whatever they're doing now or guys who are still playing the game. There's guys that are still playing in the NHL that he coached. You know, I think Lyles. I can't remember who the last guys he coached, but I think he coached Orkoff's Jim Lyles. still in the league, too. Pardon me? Orkoff's still in the league. Yeah, Orkoff, you know. Um, some of the former coaches um, that he's coached, it, the guys he you know organized leagues with, and it's, oh, God, his, his, uh, his reach is... Is incredible and as it relates to our sport. As a former administrator yourself, you, you got to see him make that transition to the athletic director role. Can you kind of speak to what he did to, to help Michigan State get to where it's at right now? You know, that, that I can't speak specifically to because my only dealings with him at that time were as commissioner and, and his representation of Michigan State to the CCHA, which was very consistent with what it was like when he was the head coach. You know, he, he put the league first. The league really mattered to him. Um, he was an athletic director who was always attending the meetings and, you know, deeply knew what the hockey issues were and, and contributed. So it would probably be better served to get more accurate and impactful information from those who worked with him on this campus and those administrative roles better than I. Would you still see a lot of his fingerprints with inside him on and then over at the football stadium. Oh, sure. I think, you know, his, his, his personality impacted so many people who, who he's worked with for so many years here. And um, I, I, I don't want to list names because I, I don't know who they all are, but I know, you know, he was here with the Mark Hollis's and Shelley's and Tom Izzo's and, and um, Greg Iannis. And I can go on and on and on, but uh, I know he was instrumental in, in some things that took place in the football stadium. In other facilities, and so um, you know he's he's made a huge impact on this campus for sure. Anything else, guys? Tom Newton's here as well, so we can bring him in. Yeah, I mean, these are guys.